so I created these very simple shapes, but what I wanted to do was combine a die with an embossing folder. And they've done that before with Sizzix with certain designs. So I was saying, like, what does it take for me to do that? Like, well, you have to keep your shape simple. And I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, like that's a little bit of a compromise. I'm like, okay, I can do that. So here's what we've got. Let me take this. I'll do this in blue. Let's do that. I like that. So if I want, I can go in and I can cut out a shape. So if I want to cut out a butterfly, I can cut it out on my card. But what I love about this, because it's steel rule, is forget card stock. I'm going to go to the good stuff. I want to do grunge. You know, grunge board, chipboard. I can now make big shapes or big frames. So I'm going to lay that down. I'm going to place this between my cutting pads. Run this through the machine. And so now I have a shape. So my shape, besides that it's a big shape, I've got a great frame now. So if I was to cut this on a large surface, I can put this over a scrapbook and now make a frame out of it. But these also come with a matching texture paper. So when you buy this, both of those are in the same package. So that's included. So it's not like, you know, I've done other things with like the tattered poinsettia and all of that where you have to get the dye and then you have to go find the texture paper. This is packaged together and it's the butterfly, the dragonfly, and the bee. Yeah. So to me, that's that's as simple as I'm gonna get. So I'm like, I'm like, come on, work with me here, guys. Because <laughs> they're like, well, maybe you can just smooth that out. <laughs> come on, work with me here. Um, so what's cool is that now I can take that shape and put it right into my embossing folder, and we're going to emboss it. So I can remove the shim because I don't need that. But I'm gonna work on my platform. This is out. And now I have all of my detail. So let's talk about when we have the detail. I can take some ink pads, take things like the Distress Minis, take our blending tool. shapes and designs and if you like to do embossing you can go in with embossing powder um, if you want to outline it even more or detail it remember you can still go direct to paper so if you want to do direct to paper to really accent oh, sure. that and then you can still go with your blending tool and soften that out you can do that as well so to me that's what makes these really fun if you didn't want to use the dye remember this is still a texture paper so you could just go ahead and put this right on the front of the card and you don't have to worry about cutting out of shape. So you still have a useful texture paper. That's why I wanted the outline included. Because otherwise it'd just be like a bunch of spots. Speaking of spots though, that was the idea of the shadow press. Okay. So let's talk about the next thing. Um, I really have obviously embraced the whole die cutting world. Um, I still like to challenge it. Um, I love to come up with concepts to say, you know, I wonder if this is going to work. What would happen if? So I contacted Sizzix. I said, I have this idea for an embossing folder. I'm not sure if it's going to work. And they said, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I just want everything to be an any, and I don't want any outie. I don't need anything raised over the top. And the design that I want is just going to be a drop shadow. So that's the whole idea behind Shadow Press. So Shadow Press, what they are is they are drop shadow sticks. Okay? So you get six different words in a package. And what that's going to do is it's going to deboss the shape. So if I'm like having all of that raised, it's only going to deboss the drop shadows. Okay? So the top of our surface remains completely smooth, but all of that, like the reason we can read the word is because it's the drop shadow. So let's do a word. Let's see what we got here. I have a lot of What is this one? This is Thank you. All right. Let's say if you were working on a card, right? You could take a word and you could go across, but because it's in that stick, you can position this anywhere you want on the card. You don't always have to go to the side. If you want it to go down the side of the card, you can do that. If you have three by four and three by threes, you can position those anywhere you want. And keep in mind that when you do this, you can put this on a lot of different surfaces. Okay, this is still gonna be your embossing folder. So let's go in and let's start with watercolor cards. I like that. All right, let's do... 
So for this, I am going to want to work with uh, my platform. I also want to work with my shoe. If you have thinner papers, if you're going to do invitations, maybe you're going to do this through vellum or thinner papers, you want to remove that shape. Okay? Because remember, these drop shadows are straight lines. So straight lines with an embossing folder tend to want to cut through the paper. Okay? If that's going to happen, your option is to remove the shim. Another thing I like to do when I work with, if you ever work with just general embossing folders and you find that whether they're Sizzix or not, and you find that they're cutting through the surface, if you have a piece of grunge paper, um, I don't know if she has any here. Grunge paper is good, just going to be a thinner version of grunge board. I often put grunge paper in with my cardstock when I emboss it. And it will still give texture, but then it won't cut the paper. And you can reuse that grunge paper indefinitely because it's that flexible material. So, just, all right. So back to this. Place <laughs> that in there. It's going to be two clear cutting pads. <laughs> and that's a little great. Our drop shot. Our birthday. Which is very cool. So. If I want, I can go in and ink over it. So if I want to add some ink, I can go in and use ink with my blending tool. Right. So if you really want to make it grungier or distressed, you can create your drop shadow. It just depends on the project. You know, I like, when I'm doing this, I love the look of just the neutral card stuff, because that's like traditional letterpress. But if you wanted to go in because, I don't know, you have an idea and you want to fill in the color, you can take the fine point of a marker and you can just go right in the channel of that. Because that deboss channel is so deep that your marker is going to stay right in there. So you don't have to know what you're doing. You just follow that. You don't have to know what you're doing. You know what I mean? I like that. because And that's why I'm using the plastic nib because the plastic nib is going to stay in that channel where a brush nib is going to float right out of the side. So you can go in and add a, a color in your drop shadow as well. I love that. Shadow press is super cool. It really is. It's a fun way because think of it from, think of it from a, a scrapbook perspective. You can do a drop shadow right across a photograph. And it's not going to compete with the photograph. You're just going to kind of, when the light hits, you're going to be like, oh, there's a word in there. And that's what I like about this. It is the subtlety of that. It makes people go, wow, it, it is kind of subtle. That's the whole point. It's the shadow press. It's only creating a shadow so you can get it to see it. So, I like this. How many words did you Pretty come cool. out for the first release? Oh, I only did 30. Is that all? <laughs> Tim. I had to stop. Because <laughs> uh, you get six in a package. Oh. Yeah, so in the set you get six in there. 10 .99. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, and so that, that's really one of the cool things. I can come up with a lot of other ones, but we really wanted to, I wanted to stick with words. Um, obviously, I have a limit. I think wonderful is the longest word that I did because I wanted to make sure that the overall length of the word would be able to fit on a card in all directions. Okay, so we did things like thank you, note to self, you know, with the number two, seen and noted. So there's all sorts of stuff, whether it's documentation or whether it's celebration. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's really fun. Too. I think the concept is cool. Um, some other cool concepts, like I did this die. This is called Petal Drop. It's a super simple die. Um, it actually cuts three of these petals. I don't know where the third one is, but it will cut three of them. And the idea behind this was to create a collage and then be able to cut pieces out. So for this one, I worked on grunge board. I just glued down my papers, took my sewing machine, and then ran through and just stitched all of my seams, just wherever I wanted to. Then I went and cut it out. So by cutting the petal drop, I can take the petals and I can put two together to create a heart for Valentine's, stitch it together. I can add another petal. I can do like the corner of a page if I was working on a layout. I can start building up and you can go in and create a flower shape. Or if I complete it, I can create a full circle of that. Yeah, it's just a, it's a fun component. I like it. Yeah, it's a great way to cut out collage, but still use it. And even like in the quilt market, this is a great way to use it for fabrics. Because, I mean, they're familiar with a shape like this. I just wanted to make it a little smaller for card makers. But I love the ability to do that. So, it's another fun thing. Now, we'll talk about some, There's some new designs here. So, one of the things that I did, I designed a bunch of new shapes. Let me kind of sort these out a little bit. Um, did a wood grain. A little simpler wood grain than the first brick and wood grain. I wanted to do something that didn't have a giant knot hole in there, but still had some cool kind of rough texture. I did waves and bubbles. I did some nautical dyes. I did a seahorse, sand dollar, so the waves and bubbles really complemented that. I love this drapery one. It has a great scalloped edge, so it's really a fun design because this is great to kind of come out the sides of photos as a mat. You can cut it if you want to create a, a scallop border on anywhere at the top and the bottom. That's good. 
This set's really fun because this is Artful Arrows, and this is also a full alphabet die. So I like that. I like that we can just create a full background because if you're doing something, I don't know, for a birthday or something, you can go in and highlight their initial, I don't know, I kind of think right in my head. But one of the things I really liked, and I don't know where the other piece is, um, I did a bunch of mini textures. So the whole idea behind the mini texture was to be able to use the diffusers. A lot of people want to use the embossing diffusers, but I didn't have a real uh, busy all over pattern. So if you diffuse like something like this, you kind of lose the effect. You wanted something small. All of these designs coordinate with the framework shape. So I did that all over pattern. I did uh, this all over pattern right here. I did the chevron all over pattern. I did the honeycomb and I have this. And it's all that, so there's a red one somewhere. Um, but it's all a much smaller pattern. And so there again, if you want to keep that shape with your frameworks, now you can emboss the background and use parts and pieces of your frames. It's really cool. Yeah, I think frameworks, I mean, the reason I wanted to do like a collage for these samples is because I picture a lot of different artists doing their little collage pieces, their little samples, and then just cutting them up and putting little bits of their artwork into projects. You know what I mean? That's what's so fun about it. Yeah, it's using little snippets of stuff or you know, maybe you have some ephemera, maybe you have a, a map or cards or something from a trip and you don't want to use the whole thing because it's not that good. Just die cut it and use the different shapes and pieces of it. So it's, it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. Do I do? So, any questions on anything? It's cool. It's cool new stuff and scissors. Seriously. You gotta check out the boots because the boots rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the things that we did. Just that Debbie, Debbie Adams is here. She's the one that's behind like all of that creation. Really cool and some very talented designers. You see that beautiful box right there with the butterfly and dragonfly? You see that? It's pretty amazing. The artist right there is Heather. Heather made that project. But she's like, I'm going to crawl into my skin now. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool though. I mean, like for me as a designer, the most rewarding thing is coming to the show and seeing what all the talented people do with the stuff that they design. Best. I already know what I want to do with it's in my head, so when I see what other people want to do with it, it's like this. You know what I mean? Thank you too. It's the most rewarding thing is someone to say, wow, you made that with that. We you have to know from being in the kid, that's, the, that's what keeps us all excited, right? Because you're going to see it as one thing, but then when you go on something like Pinterest or something and you're like, oh my gosh, I would have never thought to make that with that. Yeah, that's what I find is the best thing about coming to CHA. It's like seeing what people do with you know, you see all the sneak peeks and you're like, okay, package thing, wood blocks that are press, or a lot of people talk about this, they're like, okay, I saw it on your blog, I'll be honest, didn't get it, yeah, you know, they're like, okay, I want to cut that, why? Um, but then when they see the versatility and how you can build on the front of a journal or, you know, create some tech to do gesso over the top, even use it as a stencil for screen, because let's say I want to use it as a stencil, I have the ability to pop out whatever windows I want, when I'm stenciling. So you can use it that way and then fill in the ones that you that you want to change out. So it's pretty cool. Any questions on this one? That's awesome. I know. I'm gonna grab some other dice. It is, that's super cool. Alright, let's talk about some other stuff. You can use sand and see. I was very excited to see this. Was I Mark? You were I was. I was very excited. Um, this is a change that I just saw it, which I'm pretty happy about. Because I just saw that again. Like, when are we doing this? Um, yeah, so they are obviously updating the base tray to include a grid on there for positioning, especially if you're using like the dimensional cutting pad. Because I guess they were tired of me drawing on mine with a Sharpie. This is the only thing I can think of. So apparently this is going to be a running change. So, you know, if you're, if you're in the market for a new base tray, just make sure that on the package you see this grid pattern, because I just went and checked. So if it looks like a grid on the package, it's done. Well, I want to find out how they did it, because this was the original design, but I found that with the magnets and the steel, it was just scratching it off. So apparently they figured something else out. But an overlay should be, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, I'm curious because I think, because I'm feeling this, it's, it is screen. Like you can you can kind of feel that ink over the top. I'm excited about that. What? That's probably it. Yeah, I do, but I have That's probably why I won't scratch it. It's so smart. See? We should have just asked you. Because I'm like, can you just screen print it? He's like, yes. But when they use it, it's going to scratch it. Okay, so let's talk about, let's cut out this shape. This one's really fun. Clean this out. 
Wow. You got this guy. Thanks for sharing your apron with me. Name on Name on that. Never do this to your guys. Always clean that. See all this stuff I'm picking out? Not good for your guys. Yeah. The reason is because it doesn't matter what the foam looks like, you know, so when you pick this up, like see for example I kind of dug out the foam, it doesn't matter, that doesn't damage your dye. What's going to happen is if you continue to cut this and that material continues to compress inside there, it's going to create so much pressure that it's going to pop the dye off the base. So if you ever have one of those dyes that's like not stuck in, it's going to pop it right off the base. So it's just never, it's not there. Oh, awesome. Okay. I'm going to cut this out. I really like this. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Same here. There we go. Keep trying to tell you, you need to get her your own line too. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. All right. All right, so, sand and sea. This one's going to be fun because we obviously have a seahorse. Yeah, that's fun. And then this one, the sand dollar, this was just the sand dollar shape, the outline, because this goes in there for the sand dollar, but it could also be a starfish. That, listen, when you're in the, I've learned, when you have a limit of steel rule, you gotta get the most out. So like, we can do a starfish dye. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. If I want to do a little ocean thing, I just want to buy one. So that's what that is. So when you see that on the package, it's just layering that starfish on top to make the sand dollar, and then also cutting it a second time for the starfish. So I think maybe sometimes I drive them a little crazy with my, and I think this creative people, we look, we already won it. Let's get the most out of it. I'll do this for the next person. All right, so we're gonna do the next one. That's why you need a die pick. You do. Yes, because this is this is a tempered steel allowing you this motion. That's why it's shaped like that for your finger. Because this is its digging motion. If you use a regular pick and you try to dig it out, you're gonna bend the pick. Let's see what else is down.